As you can see down here, the third item within the cervical radiculopathy clinical prediction rule is Sperling's test. Sperling's test is performed with the patient in the seated position, with the PT standing behind the patient as shown right here. The PT is going to passively move the patient's neck into cervical extension and lateral flexion toward the test side. So in this example, we're going to assume that this patient has symptoms, particularly radicular type of symptoms, that are moving down into her left upper extremity. Now remember, in a classical cervical radiculopathy, there are three neck movements that normally increase radicular symptoms going down a particular upper extremity, in this case the left. Those would be cervical extension, rotation toward that side, so ipsilateral rotation of the neck, and then lateral flexion or side bending toward that side, so ipsilateral lateral flexion. And the reason those movements would increase radicular symptoms in that upper extremity is because they collectively close or narrow down the intervertebral foramen where the nerve root exits that goes into the nerve into that arm. And by compressing that nerve root, it increases radicular symptoms. So Sperling's test takes advantage of that pathoanatomy. So to perform this test, the PT is going to passively move the patient's neck into cervical extension and lateral flexion toward the test side. So we're going to assume that this patient has been complaining of radicular type of symptoms going down her left upper extremity. So we would combine extension and left lateral flexion. No rotation is needed in Sperling's test. Once we have the patient's neck in cervical extension and lateral flexion toward the test side, the PT is then going to apply an axial load vertically downward to further approximate each cervical vertebrae, which would further compress the nerve roots that are exiting those intervertebral foramina. So apply an axial load down like this to compress those left intervertebral foramina further. And in that position, you're going to check for symptom provocation. A positive test is going to be familiar radicular symptom provocation in that ipsilateral shoulder and or upper extremity. And they may also complain of neck pain, but you need to have the radicular symptoms to make it a positive test. And those radicular symptoms can be numbness and also paresthesias, including tingling and burning shooting pain. Let's take one more look at this. Cervical extension, cervical lateral flexion or side bending toward the affected side, and then an axial load downward while we checked for familiar radicular symptom provocation. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.